Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Unlicensed Therapy with me, your host, Ari Manis. Today, we have my good friend, Nick Davis, on the podcast. If you're not familiar with Nick Davis, he is the producer for Theo Vaughn's This Past Weekend podcast. He's a producer on King and the Sting, two very popular podcasts that I have made some appearances on that I've gotten haters from, that I've probably gotten people who like me from. Maybe a lot of the people listening to this probably listen to those podcasts and know who Nick is. But maybe you've always thought to yourself, man, I really wish I could get to know Nick on a more personal one-on-one level. Well, guess what? Now you can today on Unlicensed Therapy. I hope you enjoy the episode. Unlicensed. 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 Therapy with Ari Mans. Ari Mans. I'm silly. <laughs> <laughs> you're, really, you're actually really silly, and you do a lot of uh, pun type stuff. I love puns. Yeah, like, I'm I'm not good at that. I feel like it takes a certain brain to be able to pull out little, like, zingers, and I don't have that. I, I've, I've always had this, this ability to snipe in those moments. That's that, When I land one on King and the Sting, like, and I'm, I'm, I I can pick the spots, like, just wait for those, like, little, I uh-huh. see waveforms in my head, <laughs> and it's when there's silence, and I just try to get it in there, and if it gets a big laugh, it's the best part of my week. I wish I knew how to do that, and I wish that I knew how to do impressions. Oh. I feel like certain times, you could just, if, if you do it, see, if you're an impression comedian, it's too much. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, oh, relax, dude. We get it. You're funny. You're talented. Mm-hmm. Calm down. But if you know how to do them and you bust them out at the right moment, people are like, oh, shit, that guy's hilarious. Yeah, or just like a good accent at some moment. Like, yeah. yeah. It just fits in there. Yeah, if you don't brag about it, you just keep it in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Amazing comedic skill to have, which I don't have. There was another moment or thing I was going to say, and I forgot it. God damn it. <laughs> That's a thing that happens to me on uh, on the shows I do with my two buddies because we smoke weed during it all the time. But I'm I will usually, by the end of the episode, be able to find it. Do you smoke a lot of weed? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no I do. hesitation. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. I, it's, I fucking yeah. love weed. I do. Uh, I smoke a lot of vape pens. Can we vape pen in here? No. It's fine. I don't want to. Do you think it would leak into the hallway? Uh, No. I don't care. I'm like immune. I'll tell I'm like you, immune to it, so maybe it will. We've had two issues in this podcast studio with weed, and I'll tell you both stories in case the listeners haven't heard it, which they probably haven't, because I think, I think you're gonna bring in a big audience to this podcast right now. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll try it out. I don't, want, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but people just like the inner workings of the podcast communities. Absolutely. And I, th- I, I actually think this will do numbers as do well. Do I press this? Yes. Okay. No, like you see it more the uh, the producer side of the comedy podcast mm-hmm. industry. They're all they all have big followings now. <laughs> it, it's so OnlyFans, <laughs> YouTube channels, their own podcast. It's like, and it's cool. It's awesome. The power of the internet. Mm-hmm. T- Tim Dillon has has done like bits on this on his podcast. Like, oh, really? Yeah, just he's like he's like I'm sick of these producers trying to get in front of the camera, in front of the <laughs> mic and stuff. And be like, yeah. they're not even trying though. It's like. You're you don't try to get in front of the camera. Just the little mentions you've had, mm-hmm. people you, people know you. Yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, Nick, we love Nick. Yeah, but I don't. It's, but I've never noticed you like, you know, my, trying my, to get on camera or trying to get on the podcast. It's a it's a specific thing not to ever try to make it about me. Yeah, like you want to make it about the talent. Um, but it it I like that it gives me a little bit of traction. But always try to make it about the talent. So sometimes I even feel like I may kind of be hurting the show because I'm trying not to make it out about me like I'm King of the Sting. We almost had this thing where it was going to be a, a boxing match between me and Chin. I remember that. And yeah. me and Chappelle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you and Chappelle. Yeah. And uh, like 
I think if we would have pushed that, that would like people were really digging that, and that could have happened. But I was like, I don't want to be the one pushing this because it seems sure. like I'm just trying to make me the star. I don't give a shit. It felt like on King and the Stank, like I I've only listened to the episode that I was on, mm -hmm. but it felt <laughs> like you and Chin are a big part of that show. Like not like uh, this past weekend or Fighter and the Kid, you're a much bigger presence on King of the Snake. Yeah, I mean, uh, Theo and Brendan just use it as something to play off of. Like, yeah, uh, yeah they'll, they'll bring us into the conversation. And they, even more so when there's not the culture corner there, which is like, right. they're kind of not on the show as much anymore. Chappelle and Kat were on it for a long time. It was just a lot of mics. I don't really know. It just... It's a it's an ever evolving show, but yeah. yeah. So we get thrown off of a, a lot, but yeah, and it's weird as uh because I'm friends with Theo and on the road, everyone assumes I listen to his podcast. Like I'm a like I'm the number one fan, and people are always commenting about episodes of his or things in his life are coming out to me. Did you? See? I'm like I've never listened to it. I'm sorry, <laughs> and you just crushed yourself. You gotta you gotta start making up lies or watching right. him on three times speeds because like I get enough of him. I don't need to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I get get the uh, real thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting world. It's crazy. Like how since we've been like a part, like it's moved so fast. You got you got all of this. Yeah. This is all the podcast industry mm -hmm. booming. But yeah, so we've had two Eden incidents in here. The first oh, yeah. time Great update. Bring back. there was this guy, because we do rentals out of the studio, like Call Her Daddy rents it, podcast anyway. So there's other ones, it. but <laughs> big ones. That's the, I'll brag about that one, but big podcasts and small ones. And this was a guy, and his name was June, and he rents a house in Hollywood. That's all I know about him. And his podcast was called verified only i don't even know if he does it or not but it was and he was the the shtick of the podcast was he was going to only have people on with blue check marks my head was like that sounds lame as shit but i was like maybe it'll work i don't know people like a gimmick there's you live in hollywood that's probably what your your people want to listen to so he rents a studio at like 10 p.m. So it was a late night rental, but we're like, okay, that's cool. I saw on yeah. Google Maps, you're open 24 hours Broke. a day. Get some real meth head podcast <laughs> yeah. in here. <laughs> we're open 24 hours a day. We had 24 hour access. We didn't have to be here for that one. It was he had his own engineer, and I stupidly, you know, I showed up for the first 30 minutes, got them going, and they seemed cool. So I left. I have two security cameras in here because. I'm paranoid or because that's a smart thing to have. It's Hollywood. It's yeah. a smart thing you to never have. Know. So I'm checking in on it, eavesdropping. And they're being they're playing music in here in, in between because they do like a they were doing a bunch of 20 minute episodes in this 3 hours. Who was the blue check mark? Who was rappers? I don't know who they were. I didn't actually know who any of his guests were, but they were they had big followings or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in between episodes they're blasting music, playing pizza. And it's you know, it's an office building, so I don't think there was anyone in the building at the time. If there was, they don't live here, so it's not like they're going to—and there's a bar next door. So there there was no one that complained to me, but I was like, who behaves this way, right, in this public building? So I texted him. I'm like, hey, you need to close the door. That door was wide open. And stop blaring music. This isn't—you uh, can't have a party in that room. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, we're not. It's not even loud. And I'm like, he doesn't know that I'm watching him. And I go, no, it is. I'm getting complaints. I lied. I was like, I'm getting complaints about you need to turn down the music. He's like, okay, okay. I check in an hour later. Now they have weed. There must have been 15 people in this room. And you can't tell if you're watching it, but this whole room is what? 15 by 15 feet. It's not a very big room. Mm -hmm. It's not tiny, but it's, yeah, it's kind of tiny, actually. It's a tiny it, room. It was at capacity. It was at max capacity. And the height of the pandemic, they're playing music, smoking weed, and there's a hallway. So at this point, it's 1.30 in the morning, whatever, whatever time it was. Listen to this pussy, height of the pandemic. What happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, but it's like... No, I kid, I kid. You know, it's, it's your space. It's I our get it. space that we put thousands of dollars into, tons of man hours. And by the way, like our own man hours. I didn't just pay a laborer to come here and put up this wood paneling. Abby and I spent hours doing it ourselves because we're poor. So it's our baby, right? And also, we and it's had, beautiful, by the way. Thank you. It's beautiful. And also, to give a backstory, at the prior studio we were at, they didn't renew our lease because they thought we were in and out. To, who knows why? They they didn't trust us. So we're we're also kind of paranoid that we're going to get in another disagreement with the building. So this is happening. It's one thirty in the morning. I'm like, I gotta, 
I got to go in there and shut him down. This is just not okay. So I come in there, five foot nine, regular dude. This is a bunch of rappers. I'm not even going to say what they look like, but just close your eyes and imagine a rapper. And it's that guy. So I come in. <laughs> <laughs> so I come in here and I, I'm calm. I'm like very angry because they're disrespecting my space, but I'm trying to be professional. And it's the middle of the night. I come in, I go, hey, uh, we're getting complaints from the building. Uh, we, you guys obviously cannot be smoking weed or blaring music. You have to wrap it up right now. The, uh, it's over. The, the night is over. You guys need to leave. And he's, they're drinking, too. I forgot to mention that. So he's drunk. And you'd think, you know, I basically caught them. There was way too many people in here. The place was sh- kind of a mess. Mm-hmm. Smells like weed. The whole hallway smelled like weed. I got up here. I, that's why I was so pissed, because I walk up to shut him down. And from the corner of the hallway, I smell weed. And I'm like, I'm going to get, I, in my head, I'm like, imagine if this happened during the day. I'd be evicted or mm-hmm. earlier time. Like, I might, this could really screw us over. So you think he'd be like, okay, you caught me. That was not his attitude. His attitude is, you're racist. You can't, we're not doing anything. We're racist. And then he's lying. He goes, you said I could smoke. I go, nope, I never said you could smoke. He goes, I'll find the text right now. I'm like, okay, find, find the text. And he's looking for it. I'm like, okay, let me know if you find it. All, everyone around him, all his friends are all apologetic. And they know. They, they, it's very obvious to them. They're like, oh, yeah, this, why would we be allowed to be doing this in a business? Why would we be allowed to be blazing pizza sauce everywhere, like throwing a party in this little tiny room with all this equipment. They, they realize what's going on. He's fighting. So finally he leaves. I am going to have to check out this podcast. Sounds <laughs> lit. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to describe it. That's probably how he would describe it. A lit podcast. So, oh, he's saying things. He's making fun of my shoes. He goes, look at you. You're poor. Look at your shoes. Uh, he, kept, he kept calling me poor a lot. That was like his big insult. He, he goes, should have been like, yes, I am. That's I why I don't you want you to ruin I, I was, my space. I was like, that's exactly what I was doing. I'm like, I am poor. Why Why does that matter? I'm very poor. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then he's like, I got a mansion. I could buy this studio. I'll start my own studio. I'm like, please do. Do that because you can no longer use this one. So you should start your own. <laughs> and then just, you know, creating a scene. I'm literally so mad. And this guy could probably kick my ass, but I'm it doesn't matter because I'm so mad. Like I see red my eyes, and my fists are clenched. I'm ready to deck this guy, but I don't. I hold back, and they leave. And I spend like two hours cleaning, trying to eliminate the smell. It smelled for a few days, but I'm you know trying. He to, just accepted it. He left at that point. He some his friends were coming. You know his friends literally were looking at me and apologizing and turning to him. Hey, screw these guys. Let's get out of here. Like not even saying actually screw me. Just doing it to get yeah. this guy out of there. They do. He leaves. The next, he owes us six hundred dollars for the rental. That's not even charging him for the cleanup and all that stuff. Of course, does not pay. Two days later, he reaches out again. Shockingly, I guess what he reaches out. He goes, "Hey, sorry about the uh, noise complaint last time. Uh, is there any availability tonight?" <laughs> So you literally trying to record it that night. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> "I go well. Um, you owe us six hundred dollars. Um, Venmo me, and then we'll talk about another booking. But right now, you owe us you owe us money." He goes, "Oh yeah, uh, I'll pay you in cash when I see you for the new booking." And I go, "Oh no, you got to pay us ahead of time." He goes, "Oh, I only do cash." And I'm like, "Okay, well, you could drop it off right now." And then of course he goes. He knows mm-hmm. that I'm not going to book, so he doesn't pay his tab. Then uh, the only other incident for smoking. Was two days ago, someone brought in a guy who grows weed, and he did. They didn't even smoke it. Actually, they brought in just a bunch of weed, and we got a complaint that the hallway smelled like weed just from having flowers in this room. Crazy. So the fear is there. Yeah, that's 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 legitimate. My my pen won't do that. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, it's okay. I trust you. (laughs) And it's on me. At least those times were on other people. If I'm gonna get in trouble for weed, at least let it be me smoking the weed. Not other people, but yeah, so there's the struggles of owning a business. One time I bought two pounds of weed for Boosie Badass. Who's Boosie Badass? Oh, the rapper. How? Don't you listen to this past weekend? He was on the show. Don't you listen to every episode? We just talked about it. <laughs> so does Theo listen to Boosie Badass? And how does Theo know who Boosie Badass is? He's a Louisiana guy, and uh, he, he's just got a crazy Instagram. He's always getting kicked off Instagram. But uh, <laughs> uh, we, we paid him to come on, on the, on the no podcast in, in weed. That was like the stipulation. Of he said, him. I'll come, but you have to give me a pound of weed. Because they literally. Two he, pounds. He goes to cities 
and he puts on his story. He's like, hit up my producer. We're doing features, like whatever, and like for money. So we're like, I texted him like, we do an interview for money. Uh, and there, and then we got on the phone with the guy, told him about the producer. It. You're on the phone with, or the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's got this big flamboyant black guy named Jay who handles all his thing like super flamboyant. It was with, so funny. When you say flamboyant, you mean homosexual? Yeah, and but like flamboyant in like, like Nick Swartz and Terry type type. Right. So just over the top gay black guys. His producer. I, I, not quite over the top, but I mean, it's like. I, yeah. Yeah. When I say over the top, it's real, but it's a big personality. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. And uh, yeah, we book. Uh, he he told me what it was, and then he's like asking me. Uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, we could get a pound of weed. And he's like, oh, could you get Blue Dream? And then so we're oh, making. Oh, getting picky. Yeah, and I literally literally thought for a second I was on like a wild goose chase, and they're like fucking with me. <laughs> no, Blue Dream's the easy strain to get. Sativa yeah, Sativa dominant. But then they switched, and it was. Uh, God, I can't remember, but found it. Today's sponsor is the Grove Collaborative. If you're not familiar with the Grove Collaborative, it is an online marketplace that delivers healthy home, beauty, and personal care products directly to you. That means no more trips to the store. No more taking multiple tricks. You forgot something. I don't want to leave the house. I'm lazy. They deliver it straight to you. You go online. You order it. You go to grove.co backslash Ari. And if you spend over $30, you will get a free gift and free shipping using grove.co slash Ari for this exclusive offer. I have used Grove personally. And let me tell you something. It is dope. I go online. I pick the stuff I want. It's pretty affordable. It's healthy and sustainable for the world. You don't have all this plastic and garbage products that you have to throw out and feel guilty about yourself each week. You pick what you want, and then a couple days later, it just shows up right at my door in a box. I open it. That's it. That's all it is. It's awesome. And they have products for you and the whole family. Over 2 million people have already used Grove Collaborative. So make the switch today to a healthy and sustainable life using grove.co slash Ari to get this exclusive offer of a free gift and free shipping for your first order of $30 or more. That's grove.co slash Ari. I mean, that's what he does. He's like Robin Hood. He goes to the cities. He, he picks up what bags he can get, and then he takes it back to Louisiana, and he puts on big block parties for his, his community. Wow. And was he a good guest? Was yeah, it was, it was actually an awesome episode, and they, they like— really hit it off. I mean, Theo always charms the pants off like most guests who eat. Like, uh -huh. it's the, I love it when the guest doesn't really know who Theo is and we have him in for whatever reason. And uh, they just like become enthralled with him. It's really fun to see. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they had, they had a great fucking time. It was, that's it, how it felt like I was there for the Riff Raff episode in yeah. Florida. Yeah, and I was jealous. And they met for the first time and I was like, what am I witnessing right now? <laughs> this is insanity. Because they're just like playing football in the yard. Like they were playing catch at one point. I'm like, <laughs> and they didn't know each other. It was just like making each other laugh. And that was one of my favorite. Watching his guard go down. Because we got there and like you could tell, you know, Riff, Riff Raff's guard is up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, he's cutting lines in my head and we're eating mangoes together. And I'm like, it was pretty wild. <laughs> that's that's like the full experience you could, like, yeah. that's the best you could hope for, it sounds like. But yeah. I love that episode because, yeah, like you said, you shot it. We, you, you guys did it when you were on tour mm -hmm. and you went to Florida with Riff Raff and, mm -hmm. and you shot it. And, like, the shots were, like, cl like closer on their head, but, like, uh, Riff already had the, like this idea. He like just didn't want to be on like a regular podcast, and he was mm -hmm. doing his character Dale D'Antoni, which is like this 1980s star. Neon is the is the vibe. Just oh, I thought that I didn't realize he was doing a character. Uh, it's just <laughs> kind of one of his. Per yeah, I mean that's him. That's because that's the only Riff Raff I've ever met. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that one time. But I think so that's I thought that was him. I think that's also how he acts. But he still has this other persona that he does called Dale D'Antoni, who's like 1980s guy, and he's wearing all neon and stuff in the shades and and shit. And, uh, so when you had it shot really close mm -hmm. and then he wanted this look like this VHS look and the whole episode's got like this almost sepia tone with, yeah. like, with like the thing. And it's just, I don't know. They, like you said, they just immediately hit it off. I actually thought they had, uh, known each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loves mangoes. And you've probably, you know, as you've been doing this more and more and as the podcasts have grown, you've been making more and more money. Mm -hmm. I'd say you're probably doing decently in the money department what was like when you realized oh i got money now what did you buy yourself uh 
it was and it was like the difference between like oh i have money now and like what i was making my first like four years in la it's like it's just a regular amount of like salary like real career job so so but uh the first thing i bought to was, me that's money when someone's uh, like i make 80 grand a year which is like you know kind of average i'm like oh you're rich same i'm glad we <laughs> yeah. have the same baseline because, <laughs> because yeah i'm used to like scrape you know month to month and then 80 grand is like oh i could buy whatever i want now <laughs> yeah yeah all your problems uh, melt away i'm yeah. glad we have the same same uh we're calibrated the same mm -hmm. on that so yeah i start balling out is what we're saying mm -hmm. uh but uh no, the first thing I bought, I had never bought like a nice car and I bought, um, one time, like a year before it, uh, I saw an Alfa Romeo Giulia on the street and I was like, I want that car. I didn't know what it was. I'm not, I, I don't know a lot about cars. I want to look up the Alfa Romeo Giulia. They're, they're, it's Italian. It's, it's sleek. It looked nice. I looked it up. I was like, this is perfect. It's like not too flashy, but it's nice. And it's a little off the beaten path. I don't see them a lot until I got one. Then Bader Meinhof kicked in, saw them all the time. Wait, uh, what's Bader? Meinhof. It's like the phenomenon when you hear a term or a phrase or hear about something. and then Oh, you like once you knew it existed. Then you start hearing it all the time. It's called the Alpha Romeo Giulia. G-I-U-L-I-A. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, yeah. That's a good looking car. Did it have any issues while you had it? I know they're t those are known not to be the most reliable of vehicles. Uh, It did not have any. It, really? They're, they're not? I believe Alfa Romeos are not known to be the most reliable cars. That being said, if you're leasing, it doesn't matter. I didn't. It's I bought new, it. I bought it a year old. One year old. So it's probably you shouldn't have issues at that point. But, yeah. You know. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Uh, good to know, because like usually that's what you want. You want a reliable car. So that's a yeah, big. That's a big that's strike. A top, and I think the ex repairs on it are fairly expensive as well. Yes. Alfa yes. Because it's not the most common, so parts are expensive. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not buying the car now, so quit trying to talk me out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but but you want a different Alfa Romeo. Uh, yeah, I do. I, uh, I'm th so let me finish what happened to that car. Mm -hmm. It was kind of my dream car, first time I'd ever bought a nice car. I drove out here and lived in a Jetta that had 300,000 miles. Wait, you lived in a Jetta? Yeah. For how long? Uh, like four months. You lived in a car, for, straight up slept in a Jetta for four months? For a month and a, a month and a half straight. And then the job I had, the part-time job I had, the guy started letting me uh, stay in his warehouse. He found out that I was living in my car, but off, that was in Pasadena, and I would often— uh, Still sleep in your car. Yeah, because I'd be on, like, the west side for, like, a job interview the next day or something, and— You realize you were homeless. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm very, very, very aware I was homeless. I would never would have picked that for you, uh, a homeless I, man. I, I planned it. I planned what? it. I, I, I had a job where I was making, like— 42 grand a year in Minneapolis and I just mm. wasn't happy and I was uh first first four hours of my day I'd ship boxes just like it was a guy who made mixed martial arts equipment he he imported it from Pakistan <laughs> and then he put a label on it and he had a brand called Meister MMA go get Meister MMA it's still around yeah yeah Meister MMA okay. he's killing it because he grew because he got a product on Amazon hand wraps crushed it number one pay that that one skew alone just crushed yeah. it. Crushed it. People buy them all the time. Number one on Amazon. But uh, yeah, so he had mixed martial arts equipment, and we do like two hundred packages a day. I was his first employee, and so I would. I would. Are you still cool with him to this day? Uh, we left on kind of weird terms because I left abruptly uh, okay. over like I wanted either like commission or equity or something. But I think I think he'd be super happy to talk to me. I'd love to talk to Cole. Cole is his name. The the owner of Meister MMA, but uh, I love to talk to him. We did have a great talk, but yeah, we this was like five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you've only been in LA five years, five and a half, or no, October twenty fourteen. Man, time flies. Six, okay, so, six, six and a half. I guess. Yeah. Wow, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so. And the first half of my day, I was just packaging these boxes and shipping and printing labels and listening to podcasts. And I was just like, this is like 2012. Yeah, this is, was, podcasting has been around, but not what it is right now. It yeah. wasn't like everyone and their mom had a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, that was starting to still be with comedians. As because those are the the podcasts that were around. It was all comedian podcasts, and that started to be started to become a cliche around then. Like every everybody mm -hmm. starting a podcast, but that's yeah. always been the cliche. But yeah, it, and it, but it, it, whenever someone says that to me, a lot of comedians are discouraged about starting a podcast because of that. Mm -hmm. But what about when someone goes, "Oh, I want to be a comedian or I want to be an actor"? So does everyone in LA. So it's like you still got to go for it just because. And that know. that attitude 
is what allows it to be realistic because people drop out and the people mm-hmm. like are able to push through. There's as many jobs as there are. It's like supply. It works itself out. Like, especially now actor, you can always get a job. There's so many shit, shit shooting and streaming services. I disagree. <laughs> really? I mean, not that I'm heavily pursuing it, but it's very hard to get be an actor. I, I feel like full time working actor, but get, I don't know. I just feel like there's I more- mean, yeah, I guess it depends on what your goals of an actor is. If you don't mind being an extra on set, if you'd count that as acting. You could be an actor, but to get a speaking role on a real television show, very difficult. You are talking from more experience than I am. I think I'm more comparing it to any time in history to like somehow make a career, not necessarily be on TV, but make a career in the business is it's easier than ever because there's, I think there's more, more gigs and and stuff, stuff. Yeah, but you're, there's more, there's more lower middle class getting jobs than than people hitting it big, uh, essentially. But uh, yeah, you know more than I do about actually getting roles. So I can't speak from that. But uh, it depends on what race you are and what gender you are, too. If you're <laughs> like true. if you're like a, you know, Middle Eastern woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You're going to be booking shit all day. I'm, I'm dav- dating a Vietnamese girl. And if we ever have a child, uh, I'll, oh, yeah, he'll I'll, be, yeah. I'll milk get him. him into, yeah, <laughs> get him to her. be a famous child actress or actor and then have their lives ruined, but make bank off. Them. Oh, yeah. Then I don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. I don't if they can't handle it. They can't handle it. I'm a big extreme ownership guy. Mm-hmm. Jocko Willink. Um, but uh, so anyways, I'm packaging, falling in love with podcasts, thinking I could do that as like a career. And meanwhile, I was this guy's first employee and the, the company was growing by leaps and bounds. And so I was like, I wanted some incentive to like work harder to help grow the business. Like right. commission or equity was, was ideally just even a small piece token to make me feel like the, the hours I would put in. I would see yeah. something back from it. Yeah, that's besides always, just your hourly, you're like, hey, the company's growing. I'm employee number one. Mm-hmm. Break me off. That's always been like my thing. I just want like, I want to work for a goal and like see like results yeah. essentially. Uh, so then eventually we kind of came to a standstill. And within a week, I quit my job. I got a gym membership. and quit I Quit this job at the rap company. Yep, yep. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, got I had just got my Jetta. I hadn't had a car for like a year in Minneapolis. Uh, what and, made you choose Jetta? Because that's kind of known as a uh, a pussy mobile, and not in the sense like you'll get pussy, but for women. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, what la- made you get a woman's car? You gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> this was a diesel Jetta. So, uh-huh. are oh, you, that does make it cool. Are you taking it all back now? <laughs> if, no, it's still a Jetta. No, it was a blue <laughs> diesel. Makes it better, but it's still a Jetta. It was a blue TDI diesel jet- Jetta, which I thought was mm-hmm. great on emissions, but they lied about there that. Were, oh yeah, there was a big uh, VW emissions scandal, like six, and that was what in 2012, right, or something. Uh. Couple, no, it was like 2016 or 2015 oh, okay. because yeah. it was I had already drove out, drove, drove out here. But, yeah, um, people yeah. forgot it, that I, they kind of made it through that pretty well, I'd say, because that was a huge, that was the biggest emission scandal in the history of automobiles. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, sixty billion dollars. I think it was the biggest fine ever levied yeah. by business, whatever. That's yeah. just crazy. But uh, I don't care about the d- emissions. I'm, I just care that it was diesel. So it's super, right. it was super butch car. Yeah. And uh, For a Jetta. Yeah. And it was blue. I love the color blue. I liked it. But I actually it didn't really have a choice in the matter. I got this car. I was uh, a guy who also sold stuff online. I listed on Amazon for him. Okay. And he gave me the car and I paid it off via work. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a good deal. Yeah. And then I would also, like, I, I sold geese for him occasionally, but that didn't last long because I eventually, uh, like, like jiu-jitsu geese, I, I, mm-hmm. I, would, I went to shows and I sold jiu-jitsu geese for him. Uh, Interesting. You've always been in this MMA comedy world, even but before that, podcasting. That MMA job is really what made me fall in love with MMA because I started going to local shows and stuff and just, like, trying to learn about the sport, and I just loved mm-hmm. watching it. I've always been a sports fan. It's fun to watch. Dude, it's... Even the, if you don't like sports, and watching MMA is just entertaining. It's it's insane, especially, I mean, obviously, and then I introduced gambling on it, and there's nothing like having a bet on a fight between two oh, men that yeah. lasts 15 minutes. I forgot minutes. that you do that now. Yeah. You have, uh, like, a f- people who follow you for your MMA predictions. Yeah, and I've always, I've always promoted myself not as a sharp or a professional gambler. Right. Uh, I am a hey, de- I'm a nerd about this. If you want to take my advice, do it. If not, don't. My specific is I'm a degenerate gambler who watches every fight. Uh, so, like, yeah, take it as you want. It's funny. You can see my tracked bets on 
on uh, there's this third party tracking site where you can enter them in so everybody can see and it keeps people honest so people can't like there's a lot of shice. right people know if if your predictions actually were accurate or not yeah you can't go back and go I called it or only post your winning tickets right a lot of shysters in the handicapping totally. world. Uh, and, uh, so this is a third party tracking site and I started, I, I did three months and it, it came up on King of the Sting and I had the most unbelievable, like I had a, I had $400 on a 17 to one bet, a prop bet. Uh, like that's like, how much did you win? Uh, 30 or $6,800 on that one bet. And wow. I, and I made 11 grand that weekend. It was like, it was unbelievable. Like, yeah. uh, and it take like. There's more. That's not just gambling at that point because that's a big risk putting four hundred dollars on that bet. Yeah, and that's like you really believed in yourself to do that. I basically believed in your. No, I guess the fighter, but you know what I mean. I really believed in that specific bet, and I that specific one I touted more than like every bet I've ever. I've like this guy by submission, do it, and uh, a lot of people hooked up. But then from that point on, I went on this tail slide. I want to show you this graph. It's like, it's fucking. <laughs> Do people get mad at you? They would. They'd talk shit and stuff. So I actually stopped. I, the last couple of weeks, I haven't even posted my picks. Because like, you're scared people are going to get mad at you. Not scared, but it, it, it it's annoying. It's like, that's what you're feeling. People talking shit. People like mad at you. And it's like, I didn't make, I, there's no gun to your head. You're fella. like, hey, this is for fun. Take yeah. it or don't. These are what I think. Yeah. And, and by the way. It's fucking insult to injury because I just lost a lot of money when I when my picks True. are when yeah. my picks are bad. I know I'm already <laughs> <laughs> so I actually so from like end of December to end of February it was just a tailspin. It was a bit, like could not bet. So then I stop. I lowered my like unit. What it's called? Your unit a unit's supposed to be one percent of your bankroll. Mm -hmm. I never actually had money set aside, but I a hypothetical to twenty thousand dollar bankroll. So sorry. So then if you as your bankroll goes down, you should continue to lower your unit. So theoretically you could never reach zero with your bankroll. You're saying as you lose if you lost, you're supposed to bet less. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Do you, less. Hey, if you want to bet more, you gotta earn it. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah, and if as your bankroll goes, then your unit gets bigger and that's how you then you it gets exponential if you're actual winning better. Um and uh so I, but now but now it's swung around and since I've lowered my unit and not been posting my picks online, but you can still see them retroactively on the third party tracking site, mm -hmm. I've been so fucking hot. Uh, like, well, that's good. That means your bankroll is getting bigger, right? Uh, but again, I lowered my unit, so I, I like significantly, even right. more, less but, than. But but you're getting it building back up slowly. Yeah, but really, what's happening now? I I was an independent contractor for a couple of my gigs last year, and I'm gonna pay have to pay a fuck ton in taxes this year for again calibrate to us a fuck ton being like very very low uh <laughs> six digits uh but like that's going to be a lot of m money out of my pocket so once i pay that then i'm going to uh resu resume betting again uh but i, I got to pay off my taxes first when i was losing that much money but also i'm almost statistically back to zero my 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 roi is minus six percent and i've gambled like oh got it okay so you're losing right now yeah i have i have been but oh. i'm on the upswing almost back to zero I, if I'm break even, I'm that. That's great. Yeah, then it's a hobby that mm -hmm. you can do mm -hmm. without feeling bad about yourself. Yeah, but even it. eventually, I want to do more MMA content and an MMA podcast. And even like just having that record where you're losing, like it's like it's fodder, you know? It's What's fodder? Like for the podcast, like it's something to talk about. Like me losing is like part of it. So right. it, it's it, it's like it's basically people like, want to go on the journey with you. That's why you maybe start the podcast when you're at zero. Yeah, and then I'm at zero. Let's see where we go. That's kind of that's that's kind of the idea. If I can get back to zero, then I start, and mm -hmm. and the journey begins all over. Because there was a while where Shab was endorsing your bets, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, like not officially. Endorsing no, he your was bets, but he was giving he was giving them out weekly on his podcast. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nick's picks. He go time for Nick's picks. I'm uh, on that because I would give out one a week if you like tracked it. I, I'm even. So. Uh, oh, but, oh, you're zero there. Yeah, but you were saying it started to expand. You were saying. Oh, no, I don't remember what I was saying, mm -hmm. but I just watched the fight. It, I was in Salt Lake City this weekend. Uh, shout out to everyone who was there. Thank you for coming. With Mark Norman? With Mark Norman. It was great. Uh, he killed it. I had good shows. Fun weekend. And Love I thought it. I was banned from the club before that weekend, so it was great to be back. It was like 
a lot of check boxes yeah. filled. A lot of questions stem from there. I want to hear about <laughs> more, um, opening for Mark because I forgot you were doing that. Featuring for Mark. Featuring for Mark. Yeah, opening, featuring. Uh, he's great. Great guy. Funny comedian. Uh, nice guy. Nothing bad to say about him. Does he party on the road? Because he acts like he's like kind of wild. It's the comedy. I definitely <laughs> would not call him wild, mm-hmm. but he drinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if, yeah. if he gets offered a drink, chances are he will accept said drink. Does he hang around like the cl- like with the people? Is that or does do you guys go so someplace? So I'll say this: in my mind, you know, he is a selling out comedy clubs now. Probably could if things were normal, may, might be doing theaters. He's he's growing. He's a big act. One hundred percent. I mean, if you're if you're a comedy nerd, you probably know who Mark Norman is. Mm-hmm. So, if you're listening in, to this podcast, you know who Mark. Norman yeah, is. if you listen to this, you probably know who he is. So, you know, I would have thought he not that he would be a dick or anything, but wouldn't want to be around too many people or bombarded by comedy fans. But no, if someone wanted to hang out with him, and they were come to the green room. I mean, I probably shouldn't be saying this because then people are going to do it more. Mm-hmm. But it was a very open environment. There were a lot of comics in the green room hanging out, mm-hmm. whereas there's a lot of headliners without saying their names that want to be alone in mm-hmm. the green room or, you know, with their crew of people, and that's it. But he was very, like, down for the hang, hanging out with the, the staff a little bit after the shows, just, yeah, down. Nice guy. Yeah. Welcoming guy. But, oh, but we watched the fight in the green room of, I don't remember there, I think, was it Usman? Yeah. Uh, Usman and- Mazudal. In the fight, the pre-fight where the guy kicks the guy's shin. <gasps> You're right, Hall and Chris Weidman. Yeah, and his his leg shattered. It, that was disturbing. And it, it was like a glitch in the Matrix. I, I don't know. We I was watching it with people, so I don't know if they said this on the broadcast. But, you know, so. It happened to that guy once before, the same guy. Opposite. Anderson Silva broke his leg on Chris Weidman's leg. Oh, the, so the guy who broke his leg did that same thing to someone else. Yeah, he he checked it, and Anderson Silva uh, broke so, well, his So, like, leg. what goes around comes around type of shit. Uh, not, not even that. It's just kind of crazy. Like, I mean, he didn't do that on purpose. It's no, like, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, some people were, like, saying that, but more— Really? Is, people are saying he did that on purpose? No, 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 no. Oh. No, just, like, what goes around comes around type thing. But oh. I, I, that's not really the angle. I'm, I just think it's, like, a crazy, like, universe coming together because on top of that— so that happened to someone against Chris Weidman. That was Anderson Silva. Mm-hmm. Chris Weidman was also Anderson Silva's first ever uh, loss. He was uh, in the UFC. He was undefeated at that time. Or no. Yeah. He was undefeated at that time in the UFC. And then Anderson Silva fought Uriah Hall uh, at his last fight ever. And Uriah Hall was his last loss. Who the guy who fought Chris Weidman? No, so, did you see Anderson Silva that clip of when he shattered his leg? Was it as bad as that one? Yes, it, he didn't step on. He didn't do that step back uh, move. Ugh. That was the worst part you about it. You saying that? Uh, like, oh my goodness! But it, it it wrapped around his leg like uh, you saw when when I watched that clip, I was like, he's never gonna do anything athletic again for the rest of his life. Yeah, I I don't. I think that will be his last fight for sure. Like, but they, I mean, but Anderson Silva, you said, came back and fought more. Yeah, a lot more. Because when I watched that fight, I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm never doing that. I mean, not that I was going to be a UFC fighter, <laughs> but no fucking way. <laughs> like, no, that's gnarly. When that happened to Anderson Silva, I was actually working at Ac- Acme Comedy Club in Minneapolis as an usher, and I was following out on Twitter. On was my this phone. after the. Com- the warehouse gig or before? Same, same, same time. It was, oh, okay, it was, so you were doing the warehouse and working at Acme. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know you worked at a comedy club as an usher. Yeah, first I worked at Rick Brownson's House of a Comedy for like two weeks. Uh-huh. I, I saw I saw Sebastian Maniscalco and Jay Larson. Those are two headliners. Two, two great comedians. It was yeah. fucking awesome, but like the... What happened there? What uh, did that job it, it was It was too hard of a commute. It was out at Mall of America. I lived in like downtown Minneapolis. That's, uh-huh. that's a pretty far ways. How and far it, is that? Uh, I didn't have a car... Oh, no car. If you're driving, it's it could be 35 minutes if there's traffic. Okay. Uh, but Doesn't sound that bad, to it be took, honest. But. took me like hour 50 yeah. minutes. But okay. when you're making seven fifty an hour, right. uh, which you make at a comedy club, yeah. ushering. Uh, but then I – and then the lineup also sucked coming up after those two. Uh, so I quit, and then I got a job at Acme, and I worked there for like a year and a half. That was awesome. I love Acme Comedy Club. So, okay, so 
Oh, I didn't know all this about you. So you were kind of a comedy nerd even before you started working for Adam Carolla. Huge, huge. Yeah. Like, I mean, that Adam Carolla was the show I wanted to get a job with. I listened to that like daily. But yeah, I listened to Mark Marin, loved all the comics one on one, like mm-hmm. his early ones. I used to love that show. I And I always like, I just like sports and comedy. My whole idea was just like, just go near them. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Work in that field in some capacity. And then another crazy turn of events. Uh, a guy I worked with um, at Acme Comedy Club, Eric, is now uh, working for Jordan Peterson, like running wow. his podcast operations. And we we discovered that over via email when Jordan Peterson came on this past weekend. I was like, Eric? And he, <laughs> yeah, and it was like. That's so funny. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. It's, it, but it's, yeah, that's interesting. Jordan Peterson, what a legend. Yeah, what a legend. Have you seen that clip that Tim Dale, the promo clip Tim Dillon put out of like. Wasn't it, he kind of like Tim Dillon basically made Jordan Peterson not look that smart, right? But it, I mean, it. I think I think it makes Jordan Peterson look smarter because he didn't know who Chelsea Handler was. That was a right. bit. So it's like he really like his only re- consuming yeah. reading intellectual. It was funny, but it, yeah, it was like Tim Dillon fucking with him basically. Yeah, but Jordan yeah. Jordan like quote tweeted it. Uh, the specific clip. Uh, oh, Jordan. Oh, what did Jordan say? And he, he was like, oh, you got me there, Tim, or something. I, I haven't I hadn't heard of Handler, but uh, it was still a great time. And he tweeted the link. So he just like had a great time. Yeah, he liked it. Obviously. Yeah. But the specific clip was uh, uh, Jordan Peterson's like, oh, you got to read Dostoevsky, the way he right. tells story, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he was saying something super intellectual. <laughs> yeah. And Dylan goes, oh, I, I'll definitely check that out. Have you have you heard Handler? And and <laughs> and. and, and Jordan Peterson so earnestly, he's like, Handler? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe I have. He's yeah. like, oh, I'll send you something. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Incredible clip. And like I said, I feel like it makes Jordan Peterson more authentically like intelligent. The fact that he doesn't even... How do you not know who Chelsea Handler is, kind of? Like, she was... I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you'd think he would have heard of her, but... He understands... That's not his world. He yeah. doesn't... You could tell Jordan Peterson... I mean, he's been on a bunch of comedy podcasts at this point because of... I would I would equate that to being on Joe Rogan is why he's ended up on like Theo and Tim Dillon's podcast. Yeah. But he's clearly not like into stand up, I don't think. I could be wrong. Yeah. But no. when you hear him, he's not like a big comedy guy. A lot of people think of him as humorless. That's what, like yeah. really early on when Theo's podcast was blowing up, uh he was one of our early guests. I don't know, probably first ten. But uh we did just a compilation of Theo making Jordan Peterson laugh and people loved it, like did better than the episode and stuff. And people just like see him in that light. Cause yeah, like you said, he seems humorless. I, I wonder if like, uh, cause now Eric, uh, uh, um, I can't fucking remember his last name, which is crazy, but uh, who's like booking for him and stuff. Uh, he's a, a comedy fan. He worked at the comedy. He managed. Oh, that probably is a lot to do with it. Uh, it wasn't when we first got him on Theo's, but I think that was like the Rogan kind of mm-hmm fallout but yeah now the guy who's booking for him is a very well versed in comedy and it wouldn't make sense for jordan peterson to be funny yeah he's too smart he's so you hear him talk and he's just so knowledgeable Mm -hmm. it it would actually yeah i I think i'd like him less if he was funny (laughs) for some reason (laughs) i like i like that he's humorless if that makes sense Mm -hmm. did you think of any problems i could help you with Chewy really acts up at night, like when you feel like all his needs are met. I don't know. Things are going pretty good. I'm Fuck working hard, you. enjoying it. <laughs> Fuck you. Let's see if anyone left a voicemail. Your life is not that good, Nick. You got a lot of problems. Should I? I want to sp- drop like two grand in a weekend to go to the Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier fight. Is that do it? Treat yeah. yourself. I'm going to. It's once in a lifetime. Um, I kind of want to do that, but that's how much tickets are. No, two to. Uh, so I'm buying for two. It's me and my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're like five ninety. Why can't she pay her half? Uh, where's the equality? Uh, because it's what I I want to do. This <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're coming and you're paying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I I have to go to this because like Dustin Poirier has become a huge part of this past weekend. Him and Theo. Are yeah, fun. and he's a nice. Have you met him? Right. Yo, he's yeah. the nicest guy. He's, he's so the, cool. He is the man. He's just such yeah. a. He's he's the man, and then Connor, he, the guy I, he plays on TV is him. Yeah, a hundred percent. He there was this great clip where he was like, "Man, after putting uh, groceries in my basket and feeding my family, I, I just want to be a world champion. I just want to be a world champion, and like that's all he cares about essentially." And now now he's like Ben champion, and he's in this other stage where he's just like securing the bag and trying to get the biggest fight 
to again just take care of his family. That he doesn't care about. What more. do you see happening in round three? I know you're biased, but say it anyway. Uh I, I think I think he wins. I don't know. He's he won in pretty emphatic fashion. And you say I'm biased, but I am a massive Conor McGregor fan. I was Conor McGregor uh for Halloween in tw- <laughs> 2015. Okay, so you're not biased? Uh I am. No. Okay. I definitely like Yeah. Hard to hard Did to, you tell him that I'm a big Conor McGregor fan? Uh Did you tell Dustin that? No. no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I haven't. Uh but uh I was in 2015. I was Conor McGregor. No one knew who he was. He hadn't even won a UFC title yet. Like the people who saw me and knew who Conor McGregor was loved the costume, but uh, the most people were like, what "So, how did you know who he was at this point? Just because he was winning fights and really funny?" Or when I worked at Meister MMA and uh, did shipping and I printed off people's uh, postage for Stamps.com, one of my favorite podcasts. I loved Mondays. Mondays was a huge day for podcasts. Uh, two that stream live. One was Norm McDonald live. At 4 p.m., it was the best part of my week. Mm-hmm. Fucking, li- And they actually stream live. Uh, and then the other was this MMA hour with Ariel Helwani. And be- before Connor's first fight in the UFC, he did this interview that everybody should look up on the MMA hour. With Ariel? Yeah, Ariel. And he was just like— Don't they not like each other now, or they do? Uh, no, they, they're they fine. They're oh, fine. Okay. Well, uh, Ariel's kind of—I uh, don't know— that much about him, but I've, a lot of fighters don't like him, right? He's yeah. kind of like a... He's a shit stirrer. Yeah. Uh, but right w- during Connor's come up, he was they had this weird, like, uh, Muhammad Ali, Howard Cosell si- type relationship. Like, he would only give the big fight interview to Ariel, like a sit-down before his shit oh, coming up. Cool. Because he Connor the- really started to build his fan base from this, per- this one um, appearance on the MMA Hour. He- and he was like, he was a lot more subdued a little bit but like the cockiness was still there and he was he was he's like oh about eight months he'll probably have a title shot and fucking and he was just so it's the it's i love this interview and i want to go back and listen to it now he's great he's fucking great and he he's like he's like when i came out my mother i had my fists up and the doctor said you got a fighter on your hands and he's just (laughs) he's fucking awesome uh definitely check it out but uh so i've been a massive he had thirty thousand instagram i'm like a hipster conor mcgregor fan i'm like you so you've been following him since 30k Mm -hmm. follower that's yeah that's real yeah that's pretty early and and you should see this cot this costume when i'm conor mcgregor spot on did he see that costume i doubt it yeah i tagged him you did tag me. Yeah. And this, but was, did he have 30 when you did the costume? No. Or he had more at he, that point. Probably not a million, but he had definitely had significantly more at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's, I, I'll be honest, I was a Connor fan as well until I met Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and found out that, that they had fought. I told you, Chewie's being bad again. But, uh, we honestly, start, we opened the curtain. My couch is torn up. That, she, does she tear up couches? No, he, no, no, no. He, 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 he no, he, he's chill. He'll just make, make some noise. Chewie, be quiet. Um, but, uh, that interview, I'm not even kidding, might've been part of the impetus for me, like quitting my job and moving out here. He was the, a, the Connor, Connor yeah. Ariel fight. he talks about, he just talked about like visualization. He, he's, he's like, if you see, if you see it in your mind, you'll see it before your eyes. I truly believe that. And he's like, just laid out all these things that happened and they kept happening. Like exactly how he wrote it out. One thing that never happened was, uh, selling out a stadium at Croke Park Island, he hasn't, For him, yeah, he hasn't checked that box. He but, could though now. Oh yeah, but there's always there's always these issues with like uh, neighborhood zoning codes and stuff, and they want they want football there and not uh, not so, like. But he could. Yeah. It's just like out oh of, easy. There's certain things that are just out of your control, but mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. It's a good visualization. We got some voicemails here. Let's play one. Fuck yeah. Or let's play all of them. Today's episode is brought to you by Magic Mind. If you're not familiar with Magic Mind, it is a two-ounce energy shot. You can go to their website at magicmind.co. They are way better for you than coffee. Coffee has all these bad things, and it's bad for your teeth. If you want it to taste good, you have to load it up with sugar. Magic Mind is green. It is healthy. It has matcha in it. It has honey. It has nootropics. It has adaptogens. It has... These weird mushrooms that are probably really good for you, they make you feel good. They give me energy. I take it to get five plus hours of energy. Sometimes I take it at night just so I stay up all night and I could just do that extra little work. You could get your own Magic Mind at magicmind.co and use the promo code ARI, A-R-I. That's magicmind.co, promo code ARI. Get your life together, dude. Are you sleeping until noon? 
Are you in bed right now? Get up. Get magic mind. Get yourself some energy. Stop jerking off and start drinking magic mind. It is delicious. It is good for you. It gives you energy. It's going to change your life. Do you get out of bed and just start going and not do you? I don't know. I make my bed every morning, but sometimes I don't want to. But when I take magic of mine, I make my bed. I do dishes. I take care of errands. I go right. I do work. That could be you. If you go to magicmind.co and use the promo code ARI, A-R-I, they also have sponsored Nick Davis's podcast, who's the guest today on the podcast. They've sponsored his as well. They're a great company. Support them, which in turn supports me in the show, and it supports yourself because it's going to help you. It's going to help you be a better person, a better you. Thank you. Back to the episode. I see that you're having the real Nick Davis on your podcast, and I'm curious. It appears as if he has now taken on the dog of his girlfriend as a significant part of his life. And this girlfriend is, as I've heard, an Asian woman. I guess. And statistics show that interracial couples last less long is a hater. than inter or intra intra racial this guy's couples. Stoned. And so my question then is what is his concern if he's given thought to it about what will happen to this dog? Should their relationship end? Is he intending to stay part of its life? Is he okay exiting its life? You know, this is something I think more people should consider. What a negative voicemail. When engaging with... It's a valid question. Yeah. Perhaps many different animals. I think this guy's trying to fuck your girlfriend. How he thinks about this. I think this guy's coming for your sweet, sweet Asian babe. Honestly, it's a very valid, logical question. But I just don't. I just don't think like that. I really love my girlfriend. Uh, this guy's probably like, yeah, at the moment. But we live together. We have her dog. If if we ever broke up, if she let me, I take the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she would? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I kind of doubt it. Uh, but I also don't think that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I this is gonna sound. I think I'm gonna get some flack for this. I love dogs. Let me start there. Let me. Let me soften this by saying I love dogs. I love your dog. Sweet, sweet dog. Acts like a puppy, not a puppy. Dogs are replaceable. As long as they're, you know, if a dog dies, I'll cry. But if you know that your girlfriend's still taking care of the dog, you can get another dog and be be okay. You're not, you're not going to roll over at night. I miss my old dog. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, I Like, if anything, I'd be doing that over her. I would ask yeah. to keep the dog. I wouldn't fight to keep the dog if she wanted to keep the dog. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I actually agree with you. I love dogs. Grew up with the dog. Dogs are, yeah, dogs are replaceable. But, uh, yeah, I agree. But Theo actually has brought this up. Uh, someone called in, like, they broke up. They didn't know what they were going to do with the animal. And he called it relationship animals. And you got, he's like, you got to stop doing this, these animals. And the sad thing is, we're his third home. He was, he was, he was fought. Oh, you guys adopted this dog together? No. Oh. So. She got it. He had one home. Uh, they evidently were like abusive. I don't. I don't know the exact story. Broke his ribs, whatever. Wow. And then her brother-in-law, uh, her so her brother-in-law, brother-in-law fostered it. Mm-hmm. And then brother-in-law got married. Um, they just had a baby, and they did like didn't want it in the house. Other other factors happened, so they couldn't keep the dog. So, so then, now, then so your now, girlfriend got it. Yeah. Now now the girlfriend got it, and uh, he's just become our dog. So we're just third home. So that would be absolutely tragic if. I'll say this. That's another thing. I don't think it's the same trauma for a dog to switch homes than it is for a child. I think this guy's pretty fucking anxious. You think? Yeah. Because he feels like you're going to abandon him? I swear to God. Maybe I'm wrong. (laughs) (laughs) But also, I used to bitch about people who wouldn't leave their dogs at home because they have anxiety and stuff. Uh, And now you do it. And now I have it here with me. And uh, I yeah. just don't know what I've become. But I You're fuck- Eliza Schlesinger of podcast producers. Uh, I stole my joke that I said off air, but uh-huh. yes, I'm the Elijah Schlesinger of podcast producer. Yeah, <laughs> this is my Blanche. May she rest in peace. Oh, yeah, Blanche died. Yeah. But now she has a new Blanche. Yeah. It'd like be funny said, if she named Creedence, it Blanche. Credence to your theory, Blanche too. 
<laughs> my my neighbor had a dog named Diamond who he loved. His new dog is named Diamond. And people are like, oh, that's not very nice. No, nah, that's honest. Yeah. Dogs are replaceable. Yeah. <laughs> and I love dogs. I've always thought about because my first dog that I had from like the ages of five to 19, basically, was Cody, who's a West Highland Terrier. And I've always been like, should I get a West Highland Terrier? But this is, this is a Yorkshire Terrier, basically the same thing, but still different where it's not creepy. I'm not trying to re- replace the same dog. But uh, yeah. A good guy. So your answer to the question is valid question. I don't think about those things. I don't live my life like I, I don't look at the negative side of what could happen. I'm generally going into the stuff like how could this work, and uh, so I haven't thought about that. It'd be fucking tragic. How about It'd that? Be sad. Uh, that guy. I don't know. I I heard like a little hint of just trolling. Not I don't know if trolling is the word, but negative. Like you know, he was kind of getting off on the negative aspect of the situation i didn't know that stat about interracial couples not working he knows a lot yeah, about yeah. he knows a lot about us he's very invested in the world i think he wants to have sex with your girlfriend that'd be valid she's so, a beautiful lady so he won't i'm just saying that guy needs to think more positively is all i'm saying i think you're thinking negatively about his thinking you're, putting you're right he's yeah. created his negative energy created more negative energy it's a it's an <laughs> repeating vicious, pattern vicious cycle. Yeah. okay this is from I shouldn't I already said it. I can edit it out though. Let's pretend like it's surprised, like yeah. we don't know who it's from. I love it. All right, we got another call here. Let's see who it is. Hopefully a little bit more positive. Hey Ari and Nick. Uh this is Gianni. Um, I'm just in between setups filming my hit TV show on stars, Powerbook Two Ghosts. Check it out. Is um, he joking? No one's my seen question that. Is for Nick. My girlfriend is literally Genius. obsessed with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, and I know Nick loves that show and covers it. And I can't stand it. Can you give me some pointers on how to actually enjoy it or, like, some way where it'll make it enjoyable? Because she loves watching it, and I like making her happy. Is there, like, some type of, you know, game that, like, I don't know. I just have a hard time watching it, and I, and I know she likes it. So hopefully Nick can help me with this. But um, I love you guys, and I miss you. So, Fuck you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I oh, love you, Gianni. That's pretty crazy. You got this big star listening to your show. I don't think he listens to the show. <laughs> Let me start there. I think he watches our Instagram stories. Uh, well, could, again, the negative energy that that first caller yeah, I mean, brought he, in. Look, he flipped my whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined uh, my night. Uh, but uh, no, I like to think he's, uh, he told me he loved the um, uh, Tim Dillon episode. I couldn't think of anybody else. Tony Hinchcliffe episode. He told me that. Gianni loved my Tony Hinchcliffe episode? Yeah. So he does listen. I'm making sometimes. this up. Now, now you're... <laughs> Did you? But were you believing me? I believe. Yeah, you. he doesn't. He. I don't think he does. I think Fuck. you were right about the. Do you Instagram think he story. listened? Oh, you know what the episode he did listen to? I know for certain, the episode that he was a guest on. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I actually could see him not. He, he messaged me oh. with a bunch of notes to take things out, like well after it had been released. And I think as he was booking the show, he got very paranoid about being canceled. Yeah. And you can go back and listen to it because I didn't edit anything out. <laughs> um, but, but. Uh, he wanted me to edit out this. It, it was straight up him, like talking positively about black people. But I guess he just didn't want anything. Just yeah, just the not subject. even touch it. Yeah, that happened. Um, John Gianni actually won a NAACP award, or his show did. But I think he gets one. Wow, I yeah. don't know what that is, but congratulations. You know what the NAACP yeah. is? Uh uh-uh. uh The National Association. Uh, the North American Association for Colored People, NAACP. Is that famous? Yeah. Who else is, like, what isn't a famous thing they've given out to? They're just, like, a big organization. NAACP, So like, it's black awards. Yeah. It's like BET Awards, kind of. The BET Awards. But more, like... But more A little less ratchet, yeah. Yeah. Not that BET. Is that, ra- is that racist, what you just said? I don't think it is. I think I'm going to cut a clip of me saying, like, the BET words and you saying, but a little less ratchet. Yeah, that's fine. And just going <laughs> <laughs> to... I, I, I don't think there's anybody on the planet who can argue that the NAACP awards are less ratchet than the BET awards. That is fact. I think you're right. Please be good. Um. So his show got a NAACP award. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Along, and you know who else has gotten those? Michael Jordan, Jackie Robinson. Most likely. Martin Luther King Jr. Safe bet. And now Gianni Paolo. Yep. All the four biggest (laughs) things to the black community. Martin Luther King Jr., Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Gianni Paolo. 
the the Mount Rushmore of social justice. Mount <laughs> <laughs> Rushmore of black <laughs> black awards. No, that's uh, cool. That he but got yeah, that. his his question. Um, yeah, he asked about his girlfriend watching The Bachelor because I do a show called Another Bachelor Podcast, which we which may- is doing very well. It, it 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 was, and we may or may not continue it. What? Why? So we basically because oh. it's gotten so not fun. To answer his question, I don't like watching it either, Gianni. I do. My tip for getting through it when I watch the show, I watch it on two times speed, and I take notes. Oh, I, so you're saying the show The Bachelor got bad? Yes. It used to be better. Yes. Our podcast better than ever. We're great. <laughs> what? What did? They, why did they change the formula? Why is it bad now? It, it's really. Uh, it's a product of, and this has happened in the Bravo world too. Does, I know a producer on that show. He'd probably be a good guest on your podcast. Do you, do you think he'd come on and talk about it? I, I, Possibly. He's a comedian. Interesting. Oh, is his name Bill? Brad. Brad Silnitzer. Uh, oh, okay. It, we talked to him for sure if he wanted. We'd like. We would love to have him on. I have always like not even reached out to that type of guest from the show because like we're like he's the one like making the storylines behind this. You know what I mean? Like creating drama and stuff. That's like kind of like I don't want to do it for like my entire life, but I would love to like pull the strings on a reality TV show like that. I I would love to talk to this man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I enjoy about on, like the production side of it. We always joke about like Disney and Mickey Mouse is like just he's this Fengali pulling the strings mm-hmm. and making these people do these things. And oh, it's real. He has he has guns to Matt James's family. Well, heads. it's just you know when they're when they're doing the interviews, the to camera. He does I think a lot of that, like the talking OTFs, heads, OTFs on the flies. You know he'll create that's sort of that a lot of the, the story, dramas create he'll be like so what do you think about this happening like and then if they don't make it dramatic he'll, he'll do it you know because because everyone on the all the cast members know what they want too mm-hmm. they're there to to be a to make it a bigger hit and to be more dramatic i so could they're, read it. they're almost actors so you could say to them okay do it again but you hate that remember you hate this person for doing that i i, I could they write a dissertation like on it because people like to think it's like it's like scripted and that's not it is on the producer side, but the contest- no, it's improv. The, I mean, it's like script. It's it's outline. It's kind of like uh, yeah. curb. Yeah, it's kind of like curb your enthusiasm a little bit, just with instead of f- funny being the motive, it's drama. And instead of the actors being on board with the outline, they are forced by this invisible hand because they will be kicked off the show if they right. do not comply. They're forced, and it wasn't pre-written. It may, it's not quite as pre-written as that is Curb because they don't have the outline until they start. You know what I mean? They they make it as they go. Here's another, because that guy I'm assuming has become friends with contestants. Like, I don't know for certain. Or, because on that. this weird relationship happens with because like they're nice to each other because of this weird symbiotic relationship. The producers want to be like, oh no, he likes you. Like you're like the best one. And those people are like, I have to do what they say so I can continue to grow my Instagram following <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, 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 and then sell fab fit fun once I am off the show. And it just, so these people are acting real. So like that, it, it, it's still kind of reality TV. It's very interesting, but it's all fame seeking. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a core level of realness mm-hmm. in the show. I remember I went on a date with a girl beautiful girl um i met her at the upstairs of a hooters to do comedy i've met a few girls that way uh she was watching the show with her mother but i asked her out in front of her mother in front of her mother yeah i asked her that's actually like a really great move you know like yeah the girl will think it's cute kind of probably and then the mom's kind of pushing for you like whatever happened with ari did you go (laughs) did you see him like like it forces her to kind of take a date but um we didn't hit it off. She didn't really like me. I don't think she was that attracted to me. She was out of my league. Mm-hmm. But I looked her up, and she had been on The Bachelor. And I watched her clips, and this was right before our date. What's her name? Uh, her name's Ashley Willis is her name. Early before, season Before my time, yeah. Yeah, she was early on. But she's a, she now pursues music. Um, she plays the guitar, sings, that kind of thing. And on the show, she plays a song for The Bachelor. And she has a good voice, don't get me wrong, she's talented, but you could tell she's like trying to promote her talents for when the show oh, is yeah. over. And it is the grossest <laughs> thing I have ever seen. It's cringy bad. And then but she was I still went on a date. How far did she make it on the show? I think she got cut pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty early. early. Pretty early. But yeah. the fact that she got her song out there, that's a big win. Yeah, I mean it was like a song she made for the show. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that was my bachelor 
experience. Yeah, so th that's my advice to Gianni, but I don't think your girlfriend would go for it. Watch the shows on two times speed. But that's not advice of how to make the show good. That's advice of how to get through it faster. Make it bearable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you're right. If you look at it, maybe take a, a look at it. Like Gianni loves production. He loves filmmaking in general. Oh, yeah. He's very, very into that. So look at how Ari and I were talking. Don't take it at face value. Right. There's a lot going on in the scenes to make the magic that you're seeing. Right. Happen. Try to understand it. Like pretend like you're going to pitch a reality show or create a reality show to pitch and understand the dynamics of it and the math behind it. Or get your girlfriend into Below Deck, a much better reality TV show. Uh, do you do a podcast for that too? I I've do. never heard of Below Deck. I do. It's uh, Bravo. Is, is it popular? Yeah, it's like surpassed Housewives as like Bravo's biggest oh, wow. property. They're about to have like fourth and fifth spin-offs. What if you made a drinking game out of The Bachelor? Every time there's a cringeworthy moment or uh, some sort of thing that happens a lot, take eh. a shot. Gianni doesn't drink. No? No. Nope. Did he used to? Nope. Okay, every time they do that, your girlfriend has to suck your dick. That's, every time something that, like that happens. That's that's good. I think she might have a problem with that because she's trying to watch the show. Um, You're making a good point. But uh, no, I mean, she has to also watch the show but make her, her man happy. And also get your girlfriend into our podcast. If she's not listening to our podcast, another Bachelor podcast, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I hung out with them on a fight night one time. He was having a fight viewing party at his house. Mm -hmm. His girlfriend promised me that she was going to find me a girlfriend. She basically promised without saying the words I promised. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard from her since. It was all talk. It was one of those just Hollywood, oh, yeah, I'm going to set you up with someone. I love setting people up. Nothing. Fucking classic. Well, he's maybe, gonna... you know, maybe she tried and I was unset upable. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. I don't think she tried at all. Yeah. Um. And they came over to my place for a fight night one time. And they, they came, like, way too early before the pay-per-view and started. I did that at theirs. His, his girlfriend was like, oh, my God, we're going to be here, like, six hours. But it was fun time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a good time. We got more calls. Nice. Thanks for calling, Gianni. That was fun. Nice little diversion. If you guys don't know Gianni, check out his show on Stars. It won a double ACP award, and uh, he's about, you know, five foot three man and real cutie. And we did about four episodes of a 10-minute YouTube show called Let's Laugh with Gianni Paolo a year ago. That's right. I was on one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was at Theo's studio. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows who Gianni is. He's I forgot. He was a big part of this past week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What's up, Ari? First time caller. Uh, I got a question for my boy Nick over there. This is uh, Justin. I played the judge on King of the Sting once before. Uh, I was just wondering. Twice you know, before, Justin. I was kind of trying to get into the podcast world. Kind of trying to, uh, you know, get on King of the Sting more often. I just wanted to get some advice on how to do Ooh. that. Um, yeah. Honest. Appreciate it. Love the show. Thank you, guys. Either way, you guys have a good one, man. Take it easy. Chill. Nice. What's being the judge mean? Justin is the man, and we have a segment called Race My Case, uh, where you wear a, or, or we read off, like, a news story of a crazy crime, and, uh, then everybody guesses what race they think it might be. That guy's black. He is black. <laughs> yes. He didn't start the segment, though. It was a segment we did on the show. Uh-huh. And then he sent in, he, like, found his own cases, and he was wearing a judge uniform, and he played, like, the People's Court theme song under it, and he read the case, and he was funny. He had, like, jokes and stuff. He, it uh -huh. was good. It was good. The... He, you could do a little, you got to work on the production aspect of it a little bit because, like, it sounded like the song was playing like off a phone or something. And it looked like he had a mic in front of him, but he was getting camera camera audio. Um, so there's some st stuff to up. And that didn't, to me, that almost makes it sound funnier and cuter, the poor production quality. Yeah, we, it, 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 it was great. But I would say if to become a staple, right, you gotta, uh, you gotta make the quality match the podcast quality, you gotta. Nice 4K camera. I wouldn't even go. I wouldn't even go go that far. But the, it looked it looked fine. It looked fine. Just the, the audio. The audio work on that. Um, and then he emailed. And sorry, I don't get back to you, dude. King of Sting gets a ton of submissions. Uh, I love that he's like going like above and beyond. People are asking a lot how to get into content world. And anytime there's like a a podcast that asks for some type of interaction, like do that and make it as good as you can. And it kind of like proves itself because like. A lot of these podcasts, they're small staff. There's no, most of them don't have budgets and stuff. So if you, if you're, if you stand out and you're entertaining, they'll put you on. Yeah. They'll put totally. you on or they're, they'll, they want more of whatever you created. So like, yeah, true. It, it like proves yourself. I, I know so many editors and, 
and animators and what have you that have gotten work either just reaching out to me and then people ask me uh, if they need someone. Um, and so, like, yeah, the guy who makes Theo's cartoons is probably killing it with work right now from that one thing. And those are great. And and he did a Netflix bio, and I don't know his involvement, but yeah, he's, in some facet, yeah, he's yeah. involved. So, and he, yeah, that guy is the fucking man. He's Polish. He speaks yeah. two languages, but he's he understands like the English enough to. There's his yeah. animations have jokes within them. Totally, it, they're Easter eggs. It's awesome. He's so good. Yeah, so that's good advice. Yeah, make make your content stand out, increase the production quality. To me, it sounds like he really want like the fact that he wants to be on King of the Sting more. Sounds like he should start his own thing too. Yes, the fact that he wants to be on camera and likes creating these fun. You said he was writing jokes and he was played the judge. Sounds like he should be making content for himself too. A hundred percent. And he, like I said, yeah, he was legitimately funny, and I don't. A lot of times I won't encourage people to start a podcast if I don't, I don't think they're funny, you know? And may, maybe not a podcast, maybe a sketch, maybe a YouTube something. It sounds oh, like he should just be making something. Or I'm not maybe even saying Instagram talk, videos. Yeah. I, w- I won't encourage people like, oh, what's he doing? And I won't really push him too hard if I'm like, oh, I don't know if you're... Th- yeah. it, and, and that's just my opinion. But I think Justin is funny, so he should do do more content stuff. And he emailed something and it finished his thought about like possibly going out and do man on the street uh, stuff, which would be awesome like so i i don't know i think that's actually that's it we just figured it out justin because theo's been wanting to get like feedback on on the show so uh, king of the sting it's all fan driven submission topics so people mm-hmm. will be like what's better sylvester stallone or arnold schwarzenegger yeah theo's been wanting to get like feedback instead of just that video of someone proposing it getting feedback from people on what's better Ah, so man on the street i want justin to go out on the street and ask people we'll give him the the topics ahead of time and he can ask people just on the street because that'll be better than getting King and the Sting people who all, no offense, guys, thank you for supporting the show. Try to talk like Theo. Right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> when people show up at his shows, you know, with mullets and say all his mannerisms, yeah. like gang gang and all these things, like they're little mini Theos. And I'm <laughs> like, I, I'm glad. I guess I'm glad you have a role model or an idol, but man, yeah, they don't have their own identities. Yeah, it is. But like, also, those are the people buying tickets. So again, God love you. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's like a small sect. Most, yeah. most of his fans are normal people who are nice and yeah. awesome. But there's like a small percentage that are little mini Theos. Uh, and there's a large percentage that I'll try to talk like him and fail, fail miserably. <laughs> <laughs> Justin doesn't do that. Justin's got like, he's got like swag with it. He, he was just like funny. He's like, I don't know, this guy's fucking up. He had dollar bills, you know, shake his tail. He was funny. He was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man, I'd like to see some man on the street stuff. I used to watch, uh, when I was in high school, I think I was from age 14 to 16 years old. This was actually pre- Joe Rogan, I think, or maybe it was either pre Joe Rogan, around Joe Rogan, pre Mark Marin, though, for sure. Tom Green, it was pre podcasting. It wasn't Tom, Tom Green the, is really people he's say, the pioneer. People don't realize. I you speak my so language. So he used to do a show in his living room and have Norm McDonald on all the time. He'd he lived Norm, down the street. Harlan Williams, a lot of great comedians went on and, and, and professional skateboarders as well, athletes, just uh, interesting people that Tom, Tom Green's friends mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, group of people or whatever. Tony Most, Hawk went on a few times. This was, you you could only watch it at TomGreen.com, and it was high production. I mean, he built a set in his house, and it was live streamed, and he had to buy it. This was, now anybody could do that with an iPhone. You can go live on Instagram. This was, he spent, I don't know how much, but thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to create this experience in his living room. And it was essentially, if you watch it now, it was a live talk show. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I would yeah. compare it more to like a, a late night show, maybe yeah. slash a uh, late night hybrid podcast. It was Tom Green show. I mean, it was Tom Green show. Yeah, like because he had that one on MTV. I mean, it was just an early iteration of that. This was after his MTV show. Oh, oh, after, after. Yeah, but yeah. but yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it was another iteration of that, and it was really good. And I would watch it all the time. And where was I going with? Oh, he had a message board too, and I was fourteen to sixteen. And I was a moderator on the message board because I was like, you know, I was just a nerd and I wanted to be, I just wanted to be involved mm-hmm. in that, in that world. But do he, a barrel roll. Yeah. That was a I don't even know how that came about to this day. But he that hates was, it. Yeah. People, <laughs> that was the big prank. It was like a 4chan at the time. I think something there was a, a people would call in and say, do a barrel roll. That was the big prank phone call. But, uh, there was a guy from Australia named Don Siebley, really funny dude. And he would always do these man on the street 
things that were so good they could have been his own show but he would do it for that live show and he would send them in and tom green would play them but it was um how did you become the moderator i uh so I, yeah it must have been 14 at the time <laughs> and he would take skype call-ins and these were live call-ins and there was it was very intricate he would have a, a call screener for the show all from his house and at one point i was doing call screens as well i, I was moderator then i was i was a call screener so and you like, know tom well no, <laughs> I, I knew his producer. I, I knew his Nick. Yeah. Um. It was, and his Nick's name was I can't remember his name now. But, um. But I and I didn't even know him. I would just I would basically yeah. called in and like volunteered. I was yeah. like, Hey, I'm 16. I love the show. Can I, can I help you guys? You know, I, I would email him. I was a super fan, and then uh, became a, a moderator on the forum, and then a call screener. But uh, I remember one time I was in the green room with Tom and told him that when I was 14. I was a moderator on your farm, and he didn't, it was he wasn't a dick about it, but he didn't. Get, I thought he'd be like, "Oh my god, that's so crazy!" But he was just like, "Oh, cool." Yeah, um, he's probably just had so many people through, like who have because he's been doing that type of independent stuff. He's just engaged with so many people in that way who come yeah. up and say they have something similar. But that's pretty. That's really close. And proximity. I was a comedian in the green room. Oh it yeah, was, yeah, it wasn't like a, off the street. I yeah. was like, now I was opening up that show, and I was like, hey, when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, well, I forget where I was going with that. The Don Steve Lee segment thing, stand up on uh on the sh man on the street. Oh, but how I how I got it was I called in one day. Andy Dick was the guest on the show, and I wanted to be weird because I knew that would just get you know more yeah. get him interested. So I wore like a goofy military hat, and I was a kid. I was one of the, most of the people who called in were adults, mm -hmm. and I called in. And then my baby brother at the time, he I think he was ten years old or no, he was five years old was sitting like on my lap and my mom came in and like interrupted the phone call between me, Tom and Andy Dick. And she's like, do you think Ari looks like me? <laughs> she's like asking. We're, and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, he looks like you. And she just started, she like took over the call and it was just this bizarre call. And they ended up playing on his website of like this weird family calls in. You don't still have it any place, do you? I do. It's on my website of, of me as like a 14 year old kid. You I, should play it right here. Oh yeah, I'll play it right here. <laughs> on the doors. I apologize. That's my seven-year-old little brother. We oh, watch really? you every night. Yeah. Very he does it so slow and methodical. Yeah, it's so, so a creepy kind of so I think Stanley gonna, Kubrick knock, they call it almost. He's going to kill us. He's going to stab him the night so get so through. Fun. Let, you, let, your, let your brother in and we want to check to see him. Okay, I'm going to get Let him in. We want to see him. He bring just the get, kid in. No one's flying the plane. Band. They're all going to die. Andy's band, Andy has his a guitarist here tonight from his this band. Yes. And he's going to play a song yeah. at some point tonight. So we have that to look forward. Plus a whole lot more. Uh, hey. Hey, can you do the, uh, the, oh, hi, Mom. What kind of show is this? I don't know. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi, how you doing? Do you think Ari looks like me? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Tom, I was an admin. What kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Cool, guys. We're getting creeped out. We're going to hang up on you. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> By the way, Andy, thanks for bringing the studio audience tonight. <laughs> Of me calling in. Anyway, it was a funny call. And then at the end, when I was back with the call screener, I was like, hey, can I screen calls? And he was like, yeah, sure. He just, you know, wanted yeah. the free help. I didn't get paid. Yeah. So he Child just, labor. He just tried. He just called in and asked like Justin just did. Yeah. And now Justin is going to do Man on the Street for King of the Sting. Yeah. So and some... I'm really excited about it. Like my gears are turning. Like that would really, because Man on the Street stuff, usually you yeah, kind of have to have a reason to be out there. We have a reason. Like mm -hmm. people say, we'll say wild shit. Oh, if you go out for Man on the Street and you film yourself for an hour and cut the best minute of that hour, you are going to have a viral TikTok video. Yeah. Like, it's not that hard yeah. if you have any sensibility, comedic sensibilities. But, um, yeah, I'd say the best way to get involved on any show is be chill and normal and and contribute something that's worthy of contribution and you'll make it on any of these shows add value yeah add value uh try try to learn a skill that was like a big thing like when i didn't have a job at all i was i was just like i'll do anything you gotta like d tell them what you will do for them 
like just being able to do anything there's a lot of people who are willing to do that you have to like show you have to do it yeah yeah you have to yeah do it for free and then hope that they use you and pay you later um yeah and i'd say that's a big reason of why i opened for theo is because uh i used to do it for free i I, (laughs) definitely yeah i'll still do it for free but um no, I he I used to produce his first rendition of his podcast mm-hmm. before this past weekend, the allegedly podcast, and so he knew that I was you know wanted to be helpful around. So you know you want someone on the road with you that that's even how that we want that he knew I was chill to be around and that I want uh, that I was hardworking and wanted to be helpful. That's that's how I started with Theo because I met him at the Adam Carolla show and he just saw me like kind of trying to do extra stuff around there and then he asked if I could do and I did some social media for allegedly. And eventually he was like, ah, oh, we're not making anyone. You can't really keep paying you, but thanks. Like maybe we'll talk in the future. Yeah. And that does come around. You will yeah. meet those people in the future. I worked at Funny or Die in the middle and I ran him a couple times there. And then when I left Funny or Die, I hit him up. And I actually was just hitting him up because I got laid off for Funny or Die. for like. Mm-hmm. With I like remember a, that they did a big layoff, yeah. like 50 or 60 people. Yeah. Did you know Becky Robinson? Uh, I, she worked there and so did my friend Becky John was, McKay. I believe Becky was gone for a lot when i was there because she had a baby possibly recently no no or i don't think so okay yeah well she was she accountant what becky no do? becky is a comedian she ran their so she did help with their socials okay so stuff. she maybe she was because there were two rounds of layoffs i was the second okay. i was the second oh maybe she was the first one because yeah. i knew the social the social media people at the time were dashiell drisco did yes you ever, uh yeah you know him uh, I've met him before. Yeah. yeah, he 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 did those Zach Morris's trash. Here's another thing about just create stuff and put it out there. He did those Zach Morris's trash videos. Did you ever see those viral videos? He he take a plot from Saved by the Bell, and he explain why it's like why Zach Morris is like a sociopath. And it was basically every episode. He's like, he fucking tricked a homeless homeless girl in a wheelchair to like do, kiss him or whatever. And like you, you lay it out and it's really funny. And he narrates it and he cuts it together with the episode and they went, they went viral for Funny or Die. They uh-huh. had Funny or Die behind yeah. them, but like clockwork, they would get millions of views. It was a valuable digital property for Funny or Die. Yeah. And then he left there and he eventually got, he was trying to be a writer, eventually got a writing job on one of the singing shows. But then... Somehow he was trying to do a podcast and he got connected with Zach Morris and now he does the podcast Zach to the Future with Zach Morris, uh, the guy who does it, and they're on the podcast. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it and it like the podcast is doing really, really well. But full uh, circle. Yeah. I uh, there was so I think that he worked there at the time and Becky was Becky and John were right under him. Mm-hmm. They like were on the same team. Gotcha. Yeah. And they did a stand up comedy open mic live stream. And I went there, a bunch of comedians went there to sign up for the open mic because you're thinking, oh, like, Will Ferrell's company, thousands of people are, you know, Funny or I was bigger deal at this yeah. time. This was six years ago, mm-hmm. whenever it was. And I signed up, and I'm number four, I think, on the open mic list. And the first three are going up, and I'm watching it on my phone. I'm in the room watching it in real life, but I'm also watching it on the phone. There's no audience in real life. There's mm-hmm. just, like, a few camera guys. And... They are getting torn apart. And these are my friends out there doing their, their best five minutes, right? Funny that I've seen Crush at the comedy store. And I'm watching the the comments on the Facebook live stream, and they're just getting ripped apart. This guy sucks. This guy, this is aren't jokes. They're saying the meanest shit, which we know people on the internet do. Mm-hmm. And I'm so in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to do any jokes. Like, I'm not going to go there and tell jokes uh i i don't i can't handle that kind of criticism so i went to the funnier die kitchen and i got like a knife and onion and then for three minutes i just chopped up an onion and talked about like adam mckay and will ferrell and how they need to hire me and just was like a fucking psychopath and like like played a mur- like a serial killer psychopath and but the funny thing was or not fun funny to me no one in the room knew that I was joking. They thought I was a straight up crazy person. And people online were still ripping me apart. Like, this guy's crazy, blah, blah, blah. But I, I still felt better about it. That's doing wild. my jokes. That's wild. Like, what if yeah. you would have what if you would have crushed and that would have been like Will Ferrell's like, that's the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think he crushed. I also don't think Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell ever watching. saw it. Yeah, yeah I don't think <laughs> it, he even crossed his path. Yeah, I saw him twice in the five months I was there. Um Oh, you did? Yeah. Did you, uh, did you say hey? Uh, yeah, because actually one one time was cool. one time they filmed a uh, marshmallow video there, and I got hired for like uh, it was like facilities uh, 
production assistant was was mm-hmm. like the thing. So I would when they wanted to shoot on the lot in places, I would like clear it with like the the because they they just rented on a lot yeah in, in Hollywood. So like you'd have to like same what places Oprah Winfrey you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yes yeah. so I saw it Oprah. Was Oprah Winfrey and Bunny or Die the <laughs> it, weirdest combo. It's so and and. It, we were small potatoes. Uh, if yeah. o- if Oprah, if Own Network wanted to do something on the lot, we were not allowed to do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I had to like go clear it with the lot and make sure places are open. And they were filming a marshmallow video. And in the video, he takes off the hat and it's Will Ferrell. And I was like, kind of like in charge of that shoot. I actually got in trouble because the smoke machine uh, set off the the fire alarm. And then like we were supposed to ask to use a smoke machine, but we were doing it like under the table but i basically yeah. had to take the bullet and get yelled at by the lot uh for the company for, for the smoke machine <laughs> yeah. for the company and then they laid, laid me off but actually it was like did they use that as one of the reasons they no, laid you off no, oh, no 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 they laid off a third of the company and actually it was really cool because i'd only been there five months and it was just it was kind of weird because i didn't know my my role and uh there but i started to be in like production meetings just because like i i asked if i could go in and they let me sit there and then it started to get more conversational. Like I was, I was like, Oh, I'm like finding my groove and stuff. And then when I got laid off, a couple of the executives like called me in their office and they're like, Oh, we just like noticed your effort and shit. So like, if you need a recommendation, if you need whatever, just like hit us up. And I was like, that just like was validating, I guess. Yeah. Cause like it was a weird, it was a weird five months. Like I felt like I wasn't really doing anything. And then I got laid off. So I was like not feeling great at the time. <laughs> time. And then I hit up Theo when I got laid off, literally just to ask him like what we were doing about taxes. Like was he going to 1099 me for that like side work I did before and stuff. And then he was just like, so what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I just got laid off. And he's like, oh, I'm moving into a studio. Nice. There we go. It all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. It was all worked out. Uh, let's play another voicemail. I don't remember why we got into Funny or Die though. I feel like there was something else I was gonna say. I can't remember how well. I think that was that w- I, I just uh, kind of threw that in there, but it was basically like we just showed. Oh yeah, the, if, if you it was the caller. Yeah, yeah. If you contribute and do a good job in something, that's how to do it. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Is just do a good, be a normal person, basically. Be cool and contribute. I'm excited. You're gonna light a fire under King and the Sting with these man on the streets if we edit them good. It okay. makes me want to be the man in the street, king of the sting guy. Um, I'm going to steal your job. No, you're you're in town. You got the gig. Sorry, yeah. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I was going to ask you one more thing. God damn it, I forgot. Don't worry about it. play the voice. You forgot? Okay. Yeah. Ari, huge fan. Me and my girlfriend kind of like the show a little. Um, I message you every day. You always respond. You might be gay. I don't know. <laughs> this is for Nick. Nick. Is King and the Sting coming to an end? Ooh. Everybody thinks it is. I'm pulling through for you guys, but we got to know, is it up in the air? What is really going on? If you can't give an answer, maybe you just kind of answer it. People <laughs> want to know what's going on, man. Love you guys. You guys are the best. Bye. There's no end in sight. I like people people say that all the time. A big thing uh, happened because uh we ended the Patreon. Oh but, really? Yeah. I didn't know you guys did that. It was just like it's actually still up uh but like Theo's in Nashville and LA. Yeah, it was like there wasn't any Patreon content with with them both. Yeah, yeah. yeah there uh, no time. You knew about that? That there wasn't Patreon content? Well, I knew that Theo was in Nashville. Oh uh, yeah. Like uh, like I knew that because the Patreon content was me on the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, if I'm like, no one is asking for me. So if I'm on the Patreon content, yeah, they- we we had our, 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 always said it was only one episode a month, which we fulfilled all the time. But then in April we didn't get one, and then in May it was looking like we weren't going to get one. And we really don't like to do King and the Sting on Zoom. Just feel like that. Yeah, it's not as good. They should be be in the room. So then to get five in a month with them in the room together isn't fair. And we definitely didn't want to do a Zoom on. The Patreon version, because right. they, they, those people are paying, didn't want to give them a cheap version, don't want to put mm-hmm. the Zoom on the regular one, because it's not great for the show. So is that why people think it's coming to an end? Because we, we shut that down, and there, there's this weird, this guy, you may have come across his YouTube videos, Kyle Swindleus. It's their, their videos are gross. Oh, the fact that He I, does them for a bunch of podcasts, right? Uh, yeah. They're all like clickbaity. Yeah. They're the real clickbaity. It's the most clickbaity you can get. Ugh. <laughs> God, I watch those, and I'm like... 
why who does this with their life like this is gross how is that yeah just how is it beneficial to you man like do you think your youtube channel is gonna like blow up and I, I, yeah. we're giving him promo right now but like there's no way he could ever get traction no matter how much promo he gets because you listen to a five minutes and you're like what? but you know what like like uh this would be a good idea for a podcast which he could focus his energy to if he were to create like Kind of a, a recap show for all the comedy podcasts. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to do this, where they host it and they're like, uh, this weekend podcast, and they take kind of highlights of each podcast and kind of breakdowns. If if you want to check it out, they talk about this. I don't know, something like that, a positive kind of spin on comedy podcasts. That, I think, could do well as a show. I've always... Well, when you create fake drama and... And all these, you know, these things, it's like, yeah, you might get a few thousand clips, but you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to get a, yeah, you're nothing. There's no end. There's no goal. There's nothing. Nothing's going to happen from that. People aren't. Yeah. You're not going to convert people to like you. They're always clicking to find out what that, what that headline said. And then they leave disappointed. Yeah. Then they leave going, oh, clickbaity mm -hmm. bullshit video. You mm -hmm. know, it's, uh. But, but anyway. yeah, so when we shut down the Patreon, that guy put out a thing that King and the Sting is coming to an end. And I think that really start like increased the rumors. Not to mention, I mean, people know Theo's in Nashville, so there's questions there. But right. like I said, there's no end in sight. Uh, like, uh, I'm trying to like find new stuff because we've literally done like every topic. Like people are like, I don't know. It's it's hard to find new. Yeah, it's new ever evolving show. I'll tell you why I don't see King and the Sting ending. It's too popular. Yeah. It makes money. Mm -hmm. People are watching. It would be, it doesn't make sense for it to end. It's so fun. It's fun. People watch. Uh, money talks. It's like, it doesn't, yeah. It's, it, it'd be one thing if the show was, you know, had the listenership that my show has. Then okay. they might go, oh, no one's listening. Let's kind of end it. Yeah. People don't like it, but people love it. Yeah. There's always haters, but mm -hmm. overall people love it. Yeah, totally. And uh, it's, it's, I mean... It's just not like once you get everything in place, there's a lot of production stuff. But like for for them, just show up, record, have a good time. I be. specifically said for people to call in for advice, and everyone called in with their questions. Thanks for calling in, I guess. But I wanted I wanted you guys to ask for advice about your lives. Justin did. You. Justin did. Gianni Kinda. did. Yeah, Gianni did. Justin Gianni, see, we're fifty percent. We're 50, there's been four calls. Mm -hmm. And two of them have asked for advice about You're right. And being two, I should just be grateful. <laughs> yeah. I should just be grateful we got calls. Or maybe like do it like a week in advance or something, possibly. I guess you just find I out going to be here today. Yeah, I booked you today. It was a last minute booking. I've been doing, doing a weekly podcast is a part time job. Uh, it, People don't realize. Oh, man. It, it, it's it, 10 to 20 hours at least a week. Especially if you like want to do it like correctly, because right. you could just record it and put it out. Sure. And, and then you're just. You, but yeah. no, I go through, I switch cameras, I cut stuff out, I try to make a highlight clip, like there's, it's a lot of work, man. It, it really is, but th thanks for booking me. Um, I've uh, wanted to book you for a while. Because uh, on, uh, I, I really, I'm try I'm doing like a, a circuit, uh, I'm not like a, you didn't just like get me, I'm doing the whole, I'm doing Chappelle's. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't realize. I thought I was the only one that wanted you. You're, <laughs> you're in demand. Uh, I asked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm doing uh, the Adam Carolla after show called the Water Cooler. Ooh, is that and is Adam on that or no? No, it's his producers. It's his stuff. producers. I was actually on the first sixty nine or no, the first hundred and three episodes of that show okay. or something uh, when I worked there. And then I've been a guest since since I've left a couple times. But I'm going back on because I'm doing a big push because. So those two. Let's have, push it. What are we pushing? Here? I, have, I have the Bachelor and Below Deck. But right? you said one of the Bachelor one might end. Might end. We don't know. We know exactly how many listeners we will basically get for a season. It's about eight thousand people per show, and we're gonna try to pre-sell ads for it. If we if we sell the ads and we have money coming in for it, but we're not gonna do it for free again. And then we already have we have nine hundred patrons. We're we eight hundred seventy. You won't you won't lose those though. Huh. No, because there's no bachelor specific content on our Patreon people. We have now gotten it where it's either below deck content. So there's a lot of those people definitely have to keep that mm. train rolling. And now we just started off and we spun off just a, a show where it's the general a shoot third the podcast. shit. Yeah, it's just we call it another podcast show. We just shoot the shit. We all bring in something to talk about. Uh, Dylan did a really fun bit where he saw some scammer say like 
send me this much Bitcoin to join the Illuminati. We got him on the phone. He was some guy in Africa. You could hear chickens in the background. Great bit. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and and it, I was going to ask you, for the Bachelor podcast or Below the Deck, mm -hmm. would you, and be honest here, if they don't watch the sh those shows, would they still enjoy the podcast? We get, re I wouldn't recommend it, but we get reviews on, uh, we've really, we've converted a lot of our listeners to get reviews. We just love seeing those, those uh -huh. come in, but we've got a lot of people say they specifically more the bachelor. They say we don't even watch the bachelor and, uh, we love the show, which like, I really try to not talk about the bachelor on the show. That's a, I like going on tangents and mm. we got to be re like reined in and stuff, but there is a lot of talk. That's just fun. But man, this third show, if you don't watch it, this, this is the one for the, you. The, the another podcast show. Yeah. And it's been Patreon only for three months, but we're about to launch a fr two episodes a week, one free, one Patreon. Right I now it's only Patreon. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the YouTube is live, another podcast show. Go search it. We have to get 100 subscribers to change the URL to youtube.com slash another podcast show. Oh, yeah. That's or right. another podcast network. Another podcast network search. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And that's plug. That was too long. That was too no. long of a plug. No, it wasn't too mm. long. It was good. People mm -hmm. need to know what they're signing up for. Mm -hmm. Another podcast network. Nick has three podcasts plus all the podcasts he does that he works on. You're a busy man. I, I am. Those All those podcasts, we, we do basically four, the ones, they're all the same show. <laughs> uh, they're all the, it's me and these two guys. We have a fun rapport and it's really all the How same. How do you guys know each other? Uh, worked at, we all worked at Corolla in some capacity. Uh, okay. Together we met there and we started using his studio. Um, Dylan, who's, who's my buddy, we had the same job. Uh, he's, he's like two years younger than me. And we just were both comedy. We were, we both got the job basically to yeah. try to do something, and we had the same sensibilities. And we started it. And then Pat's like forty five. He actually like he was an employee. He was like a business partner on their alcohol brand, but he really always had, was like a comedy nerd too. And yeah. we hit it off. And I've been in the green room with Adam Carolla a few times in the main room of the comedy store. Yeah. And I always like it's always that weird thing because you know he's famous or mm -hmm. whatever and. I've I've listened to Love Line. I've listened to him since I was literally twelve years old, yeah. probably. So I was, you know, bring up a couple small talk things, and then when I feel like a on a good note, leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like a kiss ass. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. always that weird. He's got a he, weird it, line, but he can talk. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you you could have just held court and been the funniest person in the world, he would, like, ask your name the next time he saw you. Like I I was going to say, I've done, I've met him three times, and all three times felt like he first time meeting him. Uh, Dr. Drew has said this, like, to his face. I don't know if this is correct, but he's just, it's like social, like, he, some almost asperger is, like, how Dr. Drew Do has Do you think if you saw him right now, he'd remember you? Yes. <laughs> I got fired in pretty uh, spectacular fashion. Have you told this story? I don't know this story, I don't think. On much smaller podcasts, I've told it. Okay, uh, I want to hear Theo, Theo, has, Theo has, like, jokingly alluded alluded to it on a number of podcasts. All right, this will be the new smallest podcast you tell the story on. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, Theo will just go, like, uh, Nick got fired here for blacking out uh, at a... Uh, Nick got fired for from Adam Carolla for blacking out and drinking at a party or something. Uh, I and can he see said that. It, and it's really funny. Yeah, I love. I, I'm. Uh, yeah, you like to sauce it up. I love to sauce it up, and then I. I and it's this is, this was four five years ago or whatever. I black out a lot less frequently now. Really, just, just that's true. Yeah, you've you've really grown up. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? When do you? <laughs> <laughs> I hear things. I hear things down the rabbit hole, dude. Yeah. I'm a gossip queen. Yeah. You know some stuff, then. Uh -huh. You know some oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, oh, I... Uh, go, wait, tell the story of how you're fired. Uh, we were up in Monterey. He does this uh, race weekend. It's, his favorite thing is racing classic cars. Uh, and we got an Airbnb, uh, and I got to go with his staff. He brings his staff. I was going to have a booth for his streaming company called Chassis. They have a bunch of documentaries. Uh, and I was going to have a booth and sell, sell stuff there. And so, like, nine of us were at this Airbnb. One of his mechanics was also there, obviously. That's a uh, pretty pivotal person. He literally has a full-time mm -hmm. mechanic to work on his cars and help yeah. haul them and shit. And uh, I, me and this guy never really got along. Uh, the mechanic? Yeah. How? How do you not get along? Like, what, do you, what is there to fight about? Uh, I, he would just, he would like come over. So they were like, Adam had like his car shop and then like his studio. And this guy would just like stroll through the studio. He knew he got paid more than everybody in the production, like the production people. And he would like, basically, he's like, oh, you guys just sitting on your fucking laptops all day. He's just like, 
kind of a dick. Yeah, kind of a dick. Uh, and uh, I, I just didn't like him. And people really like him because he this guy was pretty funny. Like he could tell stories and shit. But I just like, I just didn't. He like rubbed that. you the wrong way. Always. And then so like then we're up there. We, we were going to these parties. We were at like the Acura year end party. I was like talking. I was like, I was also very keto at the time. I was very disciplined keto. It was it was in the middle of a sober. I would have o- never thought that for you. I would do sober Octobers and like add mm-hmm. that. That would be part of it as well. Um, that means you just eat meat, right? Uh, uh, really high fat and protein diet. No, yeah. ca- no carbs really. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of meat, but also you like, you can have dairy and shit and mm-hmm. bacon and avocado, yeah. sour cream. Uh, mm. Those are keto I might foods. Go keto. Huh? I might go keto. That sounds good. You have constant cravings on it, but uh, you, if you're like trying to lose weight, it's like no doubt effective, but it's really hard to sustain to have that diet, in my opinion, yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. But uh, so I was keto, so I didn't really have anything in my stomach. That this, so like so you're irritable, huh? No. Uh, oh. w- when I'm drinking, it's hitting me a oh, lot faster, and it. I'm not drinking beer. I'm drinking whiskey. You're extra sauced. I'm extra sauced. I'm, I'm not drinking beer. I'm drinking whiskey because that's also keto. If it mm. distills, it swills. <laughs> they, they say, <laughs> uh, they say on, on the keto diet. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just drinking at this party. I'm talking to, like the CFO of Acura, just like talking his ear off. We were having a good time, as I remember it. Blackout. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> he was probably thinking, "Get this drunk guy Somebody away from get me." The, get this guy away from me. I actually feel like I was like. I was in kind of the sweet spot at that moment where I was like, we were hamming it up and having a good time. I'm sure like uh-huh. there were a couple other people later that I don't remember where I was like, get this guy away from me. Uh, the blackout starts. We're we're driving home from uh, from this party to our Airbnb and me and the mechanic are in the back. And uh, he's like giving me shit because I'm so fucked up. And like all my like anger comes out. Uh, it was just like... Just angry. I'm like, I'm going to kick your ass. You keep fucking talking. And he he had a broken ankle at the time. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Just swing on me. We'll have a fight right when we get out. Blah, 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 blah. And I, he, like, filmed me. And he just, like, gave it to the, the like, uh, the person who would be the one to get me in trouble. Adam yeah. doesn't give a shit. Uh, yeah. Adam actually, like, loved me. Like, he, <laughs> he really did. He was, he was a fan. Even uh, And then so... There's a really awkward we oh and then I black out that that day and I, I threw up on myself <laughs> at the party uh no back at the Airbnb oh okay okay uh and uh so that happened and then there's just an awkward week of work and I'm trying to like gauge the vibe and like you don't fully remember how bad it got you're like am I gonna get fired yeah yeah kind of what what's what's happening but it, oh, there's gosh. there's weird whispers going going yeah. through all the thing. Um, and then, yeah, I got, I got, I got let go. I think my NDA is expired, but, uh, fuck it. But then Adam, uh, really nice told me to come to the place like for lunch. And we like, he was just like, oh, I think you're like really good worker. It was not really up to me. Uh, like wish you the best type thing. And I've even like went there and done work at his office sense and stuff. And, uh, all those guys like there. Like freelance or what kind of work? Uh, so I just did whatever when I worked there. Uh, one thing I I bought and put together his racing simulator. Okay. Uh, and they moved it and they dismantled it. So he's brought back. Uh, he brought me back to like put that back together in his warehouse. Uh, even one time he went and like he knew I wanted extra work and I tiled his floor at his. Uh, I didn't know you knew how to do tiling. Uh, someone I was like the extra hand. Got it. Uh, yeah, but it was it was very easy. I mean, here's. Just a nice thin layer of. You're a man. <laughs> uh, barely. Uh, like man. I like I'm very impressed with all this. I would have paid, even though I also don't have money. I would have paid <laughs> someone to do it. <laughs> I had help. I had help. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that's that's what happened there. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, that'll get you. At least you didn't like, uh, you know, actually fight the guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I wish I would have. <laughs> I got fired anyways. I wonder is he still the mechanic? Probably is. That sounds like a cush gig. Adam uh, Kroll is permanent mechanic no because i think he was getting paid probably i don't know i don't know what he's getting paid to be a mechanic but he has plumber's license and now he has a pretty i think he's doing well as a plumber you won i think so yeah i'd rather do what you're doing than being a i knew a i good would plumber i knew i would tom i mean <laughs> 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 uh, that's cool well go everybody check out nick's three podcasts <laughs> Subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. The biggest, the biggest uh, call to action I would say is our YouTube Another Podcast Network. Go subscribe. Oh yeah, to you that. need to get a hundred to change that URL. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just hit thirty three hundred. That's fucking awesome on my YouTube. I, I love it. it. Is. I you know it's it's not. Hey, it could be worse. If you have, I I believe if you have 
ten thousand people who like are really fans of you and want to consume what you do, like that's mm-hmm. then you have like a, a good paying career. Yeah. Like I said, we have a we have eight hundred and seventy four patrons, and it's like nice extra spending money in a month, like, uh, and it's validating. It keeps you going, just like that people will pay to consume your content. So yeah, that's true. So far, I think I have about uh, ten. So if I just times that by a thousand. I even think, I mean, you like, you're entrepreneurial. So yeah. like you spend your time now doing this. I feel like if you put like your full effort in and content, again, you could make like a living doing it, but yeah, this is kind of low hanging fruit at the moment and you're killing it. Yeah, that's true. You're no, really, you're right. I'm a lazy little piglet. It's I don't, hard. I don't think you are. I think you're no, a grinder and a hustler. Own, but with my own content and writing, it's like, I need to. But it's, it's really it's hard, hard balance. You got to live, you got to live yeah. too, but. It is hard. The shit you put out though is fucking. I I watch your stuff when it's on my feed. Like Thank you, you, it's like you, Tim Dillon, Ryan Long, and like bar stools. Like what I'll like consume. Those are the videos you yeah. like. Do you know Ryan I've, Long? I've heard the name, oh, but man. I don't, his videos are great. He puts out one sketch on Mondays, and some of them are just one fun. a week. Yeah, and it's it's very yeah, if like I did that one a week. Oh man. Yeah, I be and people like. People wait for his one a week. They know when it's going to drop. It, it's, yeah. You should get regimented should, with it. I should. <laughs> it's, the hardest part for me is writing them. Coming up with an idea because I'm very picky. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I know I have one a week and I don't like my idea that week, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. Yeah, and then it becomes it becomes very jobby if you're like, oh, I have to do one this week. Mm-hmm. But you're, be your own SNL. They try to gank your shit. But you yeah. got you to write all week to make your one. Do them live. <laughs> yeah, I guess that'd be... Uh, one, sketch a, one sketch a week shot live. live. It would be fun experiment, but I am not a one-take wonder. I'll say that. So maybe it'd be a good exercise for mm-hmm. me. I, I, I need a lot of... It'd be a fun... It'd be a unique little little thing. Ari Live. Mm-hmm. Ari, Ari Night, Night Live. live. Ari Night Live. <laughs> it'd be good. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Anything else we left out? That's it. I don't think so. Appreciate you coming in with your little puppy dog. Hopefully that didn't uh, pee on the other side of this room. Mm -mm. He's a good boy. God bless you. Um, Stay black. Do we kiss? That's what you did with... (laughs) (laughs) I do with everyone except for you because you are atrocious. And I have herpes. Do you actually? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to cut it right after you say I have... You're listening to listening to unlicensed 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 therapy with Ari Manis. Ari Manis. You made it to the end. That was a good episode. It was interesting. A lot of good stories. We got to know Nick Davis. And what else can I tell you guys? It was long. It went long. But either you watched it or didn't watch it. Fuck the haters, dude. As Aurora says, fuck the haters. I do want to also give a special shout out to Cubenzi Frenzy. He is my first ever YouTube member, I think it's called. I don't remember what the system's called, but you could pay money to my YouTube channel. And he did. I set it up thinking, oh, maybe five people will do it. One person did it. And his name is Cubenzi Frenzy. And I think it's a he. It could be a girl. But I think it's a, I think it's a him because he's a business owner and most business owners are are men, most entrepreneurs. Not all of them. I'm not here to say all of them are, but I'd say most are men. That's the statement I'm going to say. Statistically, he is doing the $25 a month tier too, the most expensive option. I don't have any benefits I'm providing right now for it, but 
you know what, Cubenzi Frenzy, if you if there's something you want me to do extra for you that no one else gets, you let me know and I'll do it. And then if other people want it, they're going to have to join. So Cubenzi, let me know what you want me to do for you. Nothing sexual. Not showing you my urethra. I'm not going to do it. But you let me You think of something you want me to do for you and I'll do it. Anyways, what else can you do? Subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. Leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Call and leave a voicemail. The phone number is in the description. That's it. That's all I could think of. We will see you guys next time. Thanks.